Good afternoon, space flight enthusiasts, and welcome to a brief bulletin here on the Angry Astronaut. Just want to go ahead and give my take on regards to some recent statements that Elon Musk made about the last Starship test and its results and what I thought about it. And the uh, the thumbnail is no exaggeration. I think that uh, this incident was a minor setback, and also Elon Musk also said that it's going to be four to six weeks um, before there's going to be another rocket ready to go. For those of you who aren't familiar with all of this, by the way, that is a comment that Elon made recently that everything that transpired is just a minor setback for the Starship program. They'll have another rocket ready to go in four to six weeks, and most probably they'll be launching it in four to six weeks. And again, in the past, I would have said that this was impossible. I would have said that the FAA definitely would have required a much more in-depth investigation than they required the last time. To be clear, the FAA did not wrap up its investigation of the failure with Flight 7. Instead, they simply allowed SpaceX to fly again based on the notion that it was not going to put the public in any kind of significant danger if they allowed that. Well, as we can see, that is definitely not the case. Now, granted, nobody was hurt. No debris fell on top of anybody. But if the FAA had not taken some extreme action, then lives definitely would have been at risk. And so I'm going to share some information from the FAA with you folks just to give you an idea of how big of an impact all of this really had on commercial aviation. Uh, the FAA yesterday, or the day before yesterday, actually on Thursday, uh, issued ground stops that lasted for just over an hour for aircraft departing from Florida, four different Florida airports, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, and Palm Beach. The FAA said the incident resulted in 171 departure delays, 28 flights were diverted, so in other words, 28 flights went to a different destination destination because of the Starship anomaly, and 40 airborne flights were held for an average of 22 minutes while the agency's debris response was active. So 171 planes were impacted with an average delay of 28 minutes. But I think the most significant thing was the fact that 28 flights were completely diverted to other destinations because of all of this. That is not insignificant. That is some pretty extreme action being taken by the FAA to keep civilian air traffic out of harm's way. And again, the reason they had to do this is because of the debris mitigation or the debris response uh, actions that the FAA took, and that is only done if debris is falling outside of the approved flight corridor for a rocket. And this is the second time in a row that this has happened. So I don't see how the FAA could possibly make an argument that letting SpaceX fly again did not put the public in any kind of serious jeopardy. But, of course, mistakes made, and one would assume people are going to learn from those mistakes and take action, take appropriate action. But appropriate action would mean that SpaceX would have to complete its investigations for Flight 7 and for Flight 8, determine what really caused the problems to implement effective corrective actions, and that may include some engineering changes in the Block 2 orbiter. Clearly, there's some sort of issue going on with the Block 2 orbiter, and it has to be rectified. All of these things are going to take significantly longer than four to six weeks. That's what I would have said in the old days. But unfortunately, these days, Elon Musk can essentially do whatever the hell he wants, or at least based on the evidence that we have so far, because the FAA, the old FAA, never would have permitted Flight 8 at all until Flight 7 had been investigated a little bit more thoroughly than it actually was. And I'm pretty certain that that's how things are going to go this time as well, four to six weeks or so will elapse during and during that time SpaceX 
To be fair, we'll definitely implement some changes and improvements to the rocket to try to make sure that this doesn't happen again, but you cannot carry out an in-depth, comprehensive investigation of the engineering of a sophisticated, cutting-edge rocket in four to six weeks and then build a new rocket to new specifications. You can't do all of those things in such a short amount of time. All you can do is implement some quick fixes, implement some changes that the engineers think will be effective, then fly it again. And if it blows up again, well, then you got a lot more data to try to improve it for flight 10, flight 11, etc. But here's the problem. The FAA is not implementing these kinds of policies across the board. They're not taking a much more permissive attitude towards everybody. Sierra Space still doesn't have their license for a Dream Chaser re-entry and landing at Cape Canaveral. Varda Space is landing in Australia now. Their capsules in Australia because the FAA has been so difficult about their re-entry permits really when it comes right down to it, these radical changes only seem to be happening where Elon Musk and SpaceX is concerned. Now, granted, there's not much anybody can do about that. If Elon wields the kind of influence to compel the FAA to uh, give him free reign to do whatever he wants, and Trump is willing to, to allow that, then there's very little that anybody's going to be able to do about it in the short run. But in the long run, I think this is going to harm Elon a lot because here's the definition of corruption. It's when you abuse governmental authority for personal gain. And that, if indeed the FAA allows another launch in four to six weeks, that is unquestionably what is happening here governmental corruption. And even though that may not have any sort of practical impact on Elon for the next four years, the moment we have another president, another administration, especially if that administration is comprised of Democrats, then I think there will be significant consequences for that corruption. Now, it may not be legal consequences, criminal consequences, whatever. I mean, in theory, Elon could give, or rather Trump could give Elon a preemptive pardon on all of these things, and he doesn't have to worry about getting prosecuted ever again but it will have a practical impact on what SpaceX is allowed to do after these four years are up. That being the case then, I think it's very important that regardless of what Elon technically can do, he really needs to be thinking about what he should do. If, for not, if not for the long-term benefit of his company, certainly what is the right thing to do here? for everyone to be treated equally and also for there to be some realistic and responsible concern for public safety. Because any rocket that experiences an, an anomaly that creates this much disruption in commercial aviation, well, it definitely presents a threat to the public. There's no other way around it. And so, therefore, the only responsible thing to do now is to allow these investigations to play out and implement all the corrective actions that are necessary to make sure that the chances of this happening again are minimal. But if Elon doesn't do that, then I think at some point he will pay a heavy price, and so will SpaceX, and so will spaceflight in general, given the fact that SpaceX is leading the way in the most innovative space flight in the world. Thanks a lot for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please check the description for various ways to support this content. And as always, stay angry about space.